Penrit Fuller walked out of Whitfield Towers without shackles or police escort, it symbolized a freedom he has not enjoyed since 1998. That's how long the U.S. has been requesting his extradition, and how long he has been fighting to remain at home. His legal battles have been fought in every court in Belize, and have gone as far as the Privy Council. The Privy Council made a landmark decision, because they finally said that what we were saying was correct, that where you have issues of abuse of process, due process, bad faith, etc., the minister can't determine those legal issues. It is for the court. They held that, but then went on to say, but we have looked at the facts of this case, and we say that there is no abuse, there is no bad faith, etc. So we came back to Belize now, legal fight exhausted, go to the minister. We made representations to the minister, and the minister said, no, Rhett must go. We challenged that decision in court to say that he was wrong. Mm -hmm. Mr. Justice Awit said, no, the minister was correct. We appealed. The Court of Appeal decided all the grounds that we argued were wrong, except one, that the minister did not consider oppression. How did this request at this stage affect Rhett's family? And so they sent it back to the minister. And the minister, says Courtney, made the right decision. In the particular case of Rhett, as you know, 24 years had passed since this incident took place, 16 years since the request had been made. And what the minister determined is that when you look at the particular facts of this case, having regard to Rhett's family, having regard to his daughter who is uh, autistic, having regard to the effect on his business, um, the amount of time he has spent in prison, etc. And without looking at who is to blame, whether it is the US, whether it is the Belizean authorities, whether it is Rhett, <coughs> so much time has passed for him now to send Rhett, would shatter the family even further, more, pay, more pain than they have already had to endure. And he exercised his discretion and said, in this particular case, I think enough is enough. But it wasn't a decision that could easily have been foretold. For Fuller's wife, Anne-Marie, the light at what has been the end of a long, dark tunnel is overwhelming. And for being able to get to this point, she thanks those who stood by her. I had a lot of family support, mm -hmm. you know, and that love and support really, really um, just carries you because it's a soft place to land. And I definitely, I couldn't have done it without my aunt and uncle and Warren Amada Flores because they've just been such a pillar of support for me and my children and they've helped me with the little day-to-day -day things which can really wear you down, you know, with the homework and dropping the kids off at school so I can get ready and go to work and, you know, they, they've given us a place to stay because we lost our home and they've just been so wonderful to us and we, that's how you get, um, get through things. You always need somebody to help. No man is an island. Fuller Street children have suffered from his incarceration and have been told the truth about what their father has done and where he has been. In the end, they very likely provided the weight which swayed the scales of justice in his favor. At first, because we had hoped that it wouldn't drag on this, this last leg of the race, this last two and a half years, at first we didn't want to tell them. And I think it took about 10 months mm -hmm. before I actually sat them down because I was trying to obviously shelter them and protect them. But at the end of the day, I thought about it. I asked for advice from professionals, and it boiled down to one thing, the truth. And I felt that they were old enough to know the truth. On the 20th of December, when we went to the minister to make the final oral presentation, she took the three children. And when we arrived at his office, I was stunned, and I was like, wow, this is a formal proceeding. How can we take in these kids? And then I just saw the children and I realized this is a good move. And at the very end of the proceedings, when I had finished saying everything I said, the minister turned around and just looked at the children, looked at Anne for about 45 seconds. It was just complete silence in the room. And then he turned to me and he said, thank you very much. You will hear from me shortly. And I think that that personal dimension weighed heavily on his mind in coming to that decision. The long ordeal has ended and the family must now rebuild the pieces. It won't be easy, but at least they have gotten the opportunity to try. It's meant that we get a chance to rebuild our lives, and um, we just 
We just have a chance now, you know, our kids have a chance, Gabriela has a chance to grow up and be the best that she can be. And basically that's what it's mostly about. Just that opportunity has now been opened up to us and we're just so grateful for it. Fuller says now that they have shaken off the extradition, they will try however possible to clear Red's name in the U.S. For now though, perhaps it is better that they do so long distance. Mike Rodon for News 5.